Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. Welcome back to my playthrough of Red Dead Redemption. Hope you guys are enjoying this series. Let's continue from where we left off here. Let's go find Irish. You messed up properly this time, didn't you? You little paddy bastard. You thieving Mick cunt. You got it all wrong, Welsh. All wrong. It was French, I promise. He said he was going to rip you off. Now he's ripping me off. Yeah, keep on talking there, Irish. In about 15 more seconds, your whole world's gonna turn black. <laughs> What's up, boys? <sighs> Fuck off, boy. This don't concern you. When a man with a sing-song voice tells me to fuck off, it always concerns me, boyo. Look here. This petty bastard stole our guns. Tried to steal our horses. Lost clear on the matter. I never stole nothing, sir. Never did. Not in all my life. That French cunt is playing with the Welshman's tiny and ineffective mind. Push your mind. <laughs> anyway, you all got horses now. No one needs to die. Leave him be. Who do you think you are, boyo? The bloody cavalry? The voice is really starting to get on my nerves, boyo. And you're getting on my nerves. Yeah. Ain't nobody speak to me like that. There we go. A Mr. Nigel West Dickens said you'd help me locate a machine gun. And since I just saved your life... Oh, I can't thank you enough for taking care of those two degenerates. Uh, untrustworthy. Poor in personal hygiene, lacking in the finer qualities of a, a gentleman. <laughs> what about the gun? It'd be my pleasure. She's magnificent government issue. It'll be a bit of a ride, but we'll get there soon enough. Uh, follow me, fella. And so you guys are going to see a familiar character that you've seen in Red Dead Online, too. Um, To walk. Mount up, fella. Come on then, let's find this guy. What's your name, friend? John. John Marston. Chunk of luck you came along, fella. I thought I drunk the last breakfast there for a second. <laughs> Who were those fine specimens of humanity? They was the only friends in the world. The boy might glad to see them bastards dead. We all met on the boat over a few years back. Nick and Steve never said that right there was the problem. Is it normal for friends in Europe to drown each other? Never trust a Welshman, he always told me. And he got his throat slit, so he should know. The kind of fellow who would steal an airport from a flying cell and then kick her for squealing. And as for that French bastard... He didn't sound very French. Not for now. The Cheban bastards are holed up at the cabin by the lake. Yeah, so you can tell that there's something off of Irish's again. story. You best not be lying to me. Listen, fella, I didn't ask for your help back there. I don't owe you nothing. I'll decide what you do and don't owe me. I had enough of your overly aggressive manner, fella. You don't know who you're dealing with here. Irish, I've met enough men like you to last me a lifetime. Yeah! You can make quick work of those fellas if they give you trouble. The gun's stored just inside that chest. What about you helping me out? Uh, I'll cover you from the ridge. I'm better from long range. It'll be a piece of cake, fella. Trust me. Yeah, it'll be a piece of cake. What the hell did you want? Thank you!
Show you guys something else. You can actually do executions in this game. Yeah. If you actually get close enough to people, oh crap. Didn't realize another guy in the house. Yeah, so you if you actually get close enough to people, you can actually do an execution like that. Can I have this? It's not here. That lion sack is shit. <laughs> yeah. That's how I reacted to the Blood Money DLC in Reddit Online when Rockstar said that robberies were coming. Always love this game during the rain. see here um well but found a bunch of repeater ammo to stop the crime the victim is dead what no not again it happened again no I'm afraid my need is now greater than yours. for people that don't know what happened ag um, again it was um uh, last time I, I helped the stranger out um, there was a, a woman who ambushed me with a bunch of bandits, and then she ran into a train and got crushed. And now this time, this time, this, um, the wolves got this woman here. I was trying to help her get her wagon back, and then the... Damn. Yeah. Well, at least we get the animal meat, right? Here. Pass by, do something. Uh, okay, here we go. Well, it looks like, again, I wasn't able to save him. I'm just getting some bad luck. Like, I keep I keep trying to save people, and bad stuff just keeps happening. Yeah. Well, it's got some money there.
Where's that machine gun, Irish? Oh, Mr. Marston. Uh, I, I found you one. Uh. Found us one, Irish. We're in this together. You, me, and an assault on Fort Mercer. I'm the guy that saved you from getting killed back there, and who you owe your life to, remember? <laughs> Not really. It happens to me all the time. <laughs> you don't want it to happen to you again, do you, Irish? No, friend. I wants to buy you a drink. I wants to tell you how much she means to me, how special he is. And I want to tell you that if you don't produce a Gatling gun within the hour, you'll wish you'd been killed back there. <laughs> it's the whiskey, sir. It gives me the memory of a newborn babe, as innocent as can be. It makes me violently angry. Shall we go look for that gun, sir? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think John is tired of having his time wasted. Not a feller to give up easily, Yeah, it was an honest mistake. I'll finish what your friends in Armadillo started. Jesus, you're an impatient bastard, aren't you? Where's the gun, Irish? I hear some miners been blabbing about a machine gun they found. Apparently, they got it stashed up at Gap Tooth Creek. What do miners want with a machine gun? Shooting at somebody, I suppose? Or sell it? I don't know. I've never been down a mine in all my life. It sounds real fishy to me, Irish. I've just about had it with you and your game. You and Wes Dickens are so crooked, you can swallow nails and spit out corkscrews. Maybe if you was more cordial with folks, they might be better inclined to help you. I saved your life, and you repaid me by lying, nearly getting me killed. Not fair now, Johnny. We should go around the side of Gap Tooth so the miners don't see us coming. I still don't know what miners would want with a machine gun. Miners are always mighty bastards. Spend too long without daylight and foxes, and it starts playing with your mind. I never heard so much shit come out of one mouth. Only telling you what I heard. Oh, and we'll need a wagon or something to get it out of there. That gun's heavier than sin. So how was I supposed to move it by myself last time? Two-faced little bastard. Here we are. Let's stop here a moment to get a lie of the land. Stop that. Yeah, um... This place, I remember, was always my favorite hideout in the original Red Dead Online. So Red Dead Redemption 1, this place was always my favorite to visit in the multiplayer. The entrance is plain to see, and there's a shaft them bastards used to haul out heavy ore. We, I mean you, can use that lift to get you and the gun to the surface. I do it all myself, but the mines play havoc with me sinuses. I'll find us a fine place to hide these horses, and then return with a borrowed flat wagon. I'll meet you at the mouth of the mine shaft. And Irish, I strongly advise you don't run off this time. Fucking off now, boy. This is private property. I'll get the hang of this. Okay, find a way into the mine. Yeah, it looks like they are alerted. The storm is a little harder to see too, but you clearly don't like me, No need to die! 
Yeah, a tent like this definitely would not give you cover from rounds. I didn't hit him with that. Okay, well definitely dull barreled shotguns gonna be good here. Don't know how he's still alive after that, but Volcanic pistol is a great pistol in this game, but in um in real life it wouldn't have made much sense to use a gun like this. at the end of the shaft. Yeah, when I first started this playthrough, it kind of sucked with the free aim, but now I'm getting much better at it. Oh, damn. Yeah, you can die so quick in this. Oh, doing really good there, too. Okay. Yeah, I got kind of screwed over there before. I like how the enemies are still sometimes alive on the on the floor. Should have run when you had the chance. My apologies, Mister. If 
Oh, I skipped the... Okay. Yeah, so that is a Gatling gun. Um... Okay, let's... I'll talk about the Gatling gun a little bit. Let me just get out of the mine here. Okay, so there wasn't even anybody to kill. I'm surprised hey, hey, by that. I thought I'd be looking at your carps being hauled up this lift. Load up and I'll engage the gears. Yeah, the Gatling gun would definitely be really heavy. The thing about a Gatling gun is this is this is a weapon that was invented um by this time period, you know, this is 1911. You had machine guns that were already being developed. Uh, so the Gatling gun, I don't know if that necessarily counts as a machine gun, it's what it is, a Gatling. It's, um, uh, it's basically oh, a gun what with a multiple barrels weapon. on it. Uh, it, guns. Ain't that the trick? it's I six or nine barrels, I believe. And how the Gatling Meet gun works, the the it's in place, so you can't really move it, um, uh, unless, you know, you take the whole thing apart. And this, the Gatling gun doesn't have, like, a trigger, uh, push the minecart to the... Okay, yeah. The Gatling gun doesn't really have a trigger like uh, you would on other on other guns. Instead, it has like this this knob that you just keep rotating. Stop doing that. And we'll have this executive peacemaker delivered to Old West Dickens. Just make sure it doesn't fall off on the way. The U.S. military did use Gatling guns. I'm not. I don't know if European countries used them, uh, so I'm not 100% on that. But Gatling guns were not used for very long. Eventually, they were re just replaced by, like, Maxim machine guns. Uh, but let me just Google this really quick, because I honestly don't know if the Gatling gun is counted as a machine gun. Is the Gatling gun a machine gun? Let's see. The Gatling gun is a rapid-fire, mul multiple-barrel firearm invented in 1861 by Richard Jordan Gatling. It's an early mach machine gun and a forerunner of the modern electric, electric motor-driven rotary. Um, uh, it's, yeah, it's the hand-cranking movement uh, controlled by the operator. It's not in, in the machine... Uh, uh, it's not a machine gun because it doesn't fire automatically. Yeah, so I was right on that. So, technically, the Gatling gun is not a machine gun. Um, how many barrels does the Gatling gun have? Six barrels, okay. And, uh, it, it was developed in the United States. That's where it originated from. What cartridge does this thing fire? That's what I'm curious about.
metallic cartridges that were chambered in 4570. Later versions were chambered in the 3040 Krag. The 3040 Krag, that is actually the round that's actually used in the bolt action rifle, Red Dead Redemption 1 and um, 2. Uh, the, what the 3040 Krag basically was, there was this, this bolt action rifle called the Krag Jorgensen. It was developed by Norway. And the U.S. liked that rifle so much that they adopted it and developed their own cartridge for it, which was the 3040 Krag. Uh, so it would make sense why the U.S. would use that cartridge because you want to have the same cartridge as your rifles because then it becomes a um, uh, you know becomes a logistics nightmare. Uh, the thing about uh, another thing about it is that it said the earlier version used the 4570. The 4570 is the same gun that's the rolling block rifle. So the rolling block rifle. So technically, the Gatling gun is not a machine gun. Technically, it's a lot of people think it's a machine gun that's what i was thinking that it wasn't a machine gun because because it doesn't have a tr because basically what a, mach a machine gun is an automatic weapon it means that you hold the trigger down and the gun just keeps firing until it's empty but a um, uh, a gatling gun you have a crank and you're just cranking the 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 lever you just keep going like this and this and this and so it's not just holding something down you gotta keep moving it uh, in a circular pattern so i guess um yeah i guess i was right then it's not a it's not a machine gun also, the Gatling gun, I'm sure you guys know, it's not going to be a very accurate weapon because it's a spinning, you know, barrels, so it's not going to be, it's not going to be the most accurate thing. Mr. West Dickens! Ah, Mr. Marston! How wonderful to see you, sir. How wonderful. Are we ready, then? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, nearly, sir. Very nearly, sir. I just need some cash to get some extra hardware fitted to my old Trojan horse here. You, you what? Uh, never mind, sir. I can only presume that you have not enjoyed the benefits of a classical education, so I will not take umbrage if some of my illusions sail over your head, sir. I won't pretend to understand you, but I will endeavor to make you understand me. Either we do this right now, or I put a bullet in you and get on with my day. Please, I knew you were a violent man, Mr. Marston, but I did not think you were a stupid one. We need money to outfit my carriage, to turn a simple tradesman's vehicle into something more subterfuge. <laughs> and I'm about to tell you how we are going to gain said cash. Now I know that you ride very well. So come, sir, to Rathskeller Fork. <laughs> Follow me, John! It's not too far to Ratskeller Park! Okay. Yeah, you could just ride with him, you know. John. Okay, all things considered. Hopefully we can get through today without running into another army of your satisfied customers. Onwards and upwards! I refuse to let the blind stupidity of the proletariat derail my calling in life. Nothing blind about it. I'd say they saw right through you. Ah, before knowledge comes down, my dear boy. Everybody knows you're as crooked as a dog's hind leg, Wes Dickens. I resent that implication, John. I wasn't implying. I was telling. If you're such a successful businessman, what are you doing living in a cave? Delightfully Dickensian, isn't it? If you say so. Are you familiar with the concept of philanthropy, John? I'm surprised you are. Oh, I don't do any of this for myself, John. I hope you realize that. It's been quite a ride, John, hasn't it? We haven't gone that far. No, I mean us. Bitchwood Farm, Gap Tooth Reach, Plainview. We make quite a team, you and me. Brains and brawn. We should consider a more permanent partnership. This partnership ends as soon as I have Bill Williamson. I appreciate your help, but I've just about had it with all your schemes. You need to realize what's at stake here. I know, John, I know. Just win this race and we'll be ready. I give you my word. Yeah, somebody like him giving you his word. He's already lying to people. There's um, Red also... Up ahead. When Wes Dickens, when he actually calls them stupid proletariats, when he actually says that, for people that don't know, proletariat is basically a a fancy word for working class. A proletariat actually originally comes from the Communist Manifesto that was written by Karl Marx. 
Uh, so in this time period, communism was actually becoming a very popular ideology. Don't know if too many people would read the Communist Manifesto necessarily in the West, but in the cities. In cities, it actually became very popular. Even in America, the Communist Manifesto actually became very popular. Uh, so a lot, it was, it sold a lot of, um, uh, it sold a lot. There's a lot of places that people could pick it up. And, uh, and Karl Marx describes the working class of the proletariat. So that's for people that, uh, are confused what he meant by that. So, Dick, uh, you know, Nigel West Dickens is basically, you know, saying that they're, you know, stupid working class people. That's what he's saying. Come on! I know a winner! Gentlemen, this will be a fair race! No shooting, stabbing, cliff pushing, rock throwing, cactus grinding, neck lassoing, setting fires, or other acts that causes a rider to unfairly lose his weight, or bleed heavily, or black out. Get yourselves ready! Okay, this should be pretty easy to win. I think this race is going to be even easier to win than the cart one. Horses are a lot easier to control than the cart. Yeah. Race is pretty easy, actually. We're gonna see Tumbleweed over there, too. Yeah, I got a good lead on them. Yeah, we're definitely gonna win this race. No way they're gonna catch up to me. Yeah. And we're right back to where we started here. Easy. There we go. He came, he saw, he conquered. <laughs> what a fantastic spectacle, John. Let's take a moment to bask in the glory of our victory. Have we got enough money now? Yeah, yeah, all right, all right, all right. Uh, yes, once Seth and Irish have furnished their side of the bargain, I think we should be ready. Quite a team we've assembled, don't you think? A bunco, a grave robber, and a drunk. How could things possibly go wrong?
five dollars for that. Okay, so um, uh, I guess we will um, uh, we'll wrap this up here. Uh, where's Irish? Is he? Oh, he's all the way in Thieves Landing, actually. Um, might as well actually buy a new gun here. Okay, wanted to go to the gunsmith and check out that new gun. Where is the gunsmith? Where are you? Well, protecting yourself is the American way. Okay, well, that was weird. Um. Well, I'm always after items of quality. Yeah, so sell all these pelts here. I don't need this stuff. Nice doing business. You surely won't regret a purchase. Uh, well, I guess I guess the buffalo rifle and those guns are not available here. No, they're not. Okay, so they might be in the Thieves Landing gun store. So we'll just check that out next time. So um, I guess we'll wrap it up here, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this part. If you did, do drop a like, and I will see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day, guys.